um, obviously remotely via uh, Microsoft Teams. Um, can I this morning welcome to the meeting of the Regeneration Sustainable Development Scrutiny Committee, um, Dean as well, Dean Lewis, uh, who has asked to attend this meeting this morning. You're very welcome, Dean, and any input or, or, or questions, please feel free to uh, uh, prepare them and give them to the officers. Um, just to make you all aware, today's meeting will be recorded. Can I also welcome any members of the public and press to today's meeting? Can I kindly ask you to observe the meeting only and not speak or participate? Can I please remind you all to switch your phones to silent for the duration of the meeting? Can I refer you to the protocols for remote meetings, which have been previously circulated, namely your microphone should be switched to mute unless you are speaking. Should you wish to ask a question or make a comment, can you please indicate either via the chat function or by raising your electronic hand? I will assume that you have all read the paperwork before us today prior to this meeting. Please only use the chat function to indicate if you wish to speak as an alternative to the electronic hand function or to raise any technical issues. When asking a question, can you please indicate which page number you are referring to? And the first item of the agenda today is to do a roll call. I'm Councillor Steve Hunt, the chair, and I'm here. I will now call on Democratic Service Officer Chloe to take the roll call, please. <coughs> Thank you. Over to you, Chloe. Thank you, Chair. I've marked you as present. Councillor Rachel Taylor. Present, Chloe. Councillor Dean Causey. Present, Chloe. Councillor Chris Jones. Present, Chloe. Councillor Hugh James. Present, Chloe. Councillor Sheila Penry. Present, Chloe. Councillor Sean Percy. Present. Councillor Saifra Harmon. Present, Chloe. Nigel Hunt. Present, Chloe. Councillor Scott Bamsey. Present, Chloe. Jamie Evans. Present, all deal, Chloe. And Councillor Simon Noyle. I'm here, thanks, Chloe. And then we've got Councillor Dean Lewis. Yes, here. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you. And cabinet members, Councillor Annette Wingrave. Here, Chloe. And Councillor Leanne Jones. Present, Chloe. And then officers, Nicola Pierce. Simon Brannan. Present, Chloe. Chris Millis. Present, Chloe. Here, Jones. Present, Chloe. Angeline Spooner Cleverly. Present, Chloe. Harry Jones. Present. Nicola Bray. Present, Chloe. Andrea Nicol Nicholas. Jenkins. Um, is there any other officers that I've missed? Oh, I think that's everyone, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. Item two on the agenda is the Chair's announcement. At pre-briefing, we have decided to scrutinise uh, only the one item the, on the scrutiny agenda, which is the update on the Audit Wales Neath the Talbot Action Plan. And we have decided to chosen to scrutinise items seven and eight on the Cabinet Board agenda. Uh, all other items that have not been chosen for scrutiny today. Um, item three on the agenda is declarations of interest. Can I ask any members if they have any declarations of interest at this stage, please? I see no indication or hands raised, so I assume there's no declaration of interest. Uh, item four on the agenda today is the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, that They are on pages three to six. Um, they were held on the 25th of June 2021, and they obviously included on the agenda for approval. Does any member have any comments as in accuracy on the minutes? Uh, if not, can I have somebody of the members to propose and somebody to second, please? I'll move, Chair. Thank you, Rachel. Seconder? I'll second, second Chair. Chair. Oh. Thank you very much. You got that, Chloe? Yes, thanks, Chair. Yeah. Swiftly on to item five then. This is the update on the Audit Wales Neath Portalda Action Plan. Uh, 
during a previous meeting of our committee, we asked to be provided with an update of the council regeneration actions following examination by the audit Wales. Now, uh, Simon, do you have anything to add to the report? Uh, or do you want to go straight to questions? Sorry. Sorry, I'm just going to see if I, is, is it come through yet. My, uh, sorry, um, my, my computer seems to be very slow this morning. It's not clicking off uh, mute very easily. Um, no, go straight to questions. Okay. Yeah, happy to do that. There we are. There we are. Um, I'll hand over now first as in pre-briefing to Sean. I think Sean was one of the members who wanted a report back, and uh, it's there in the paperwork this morning. So, Sean, Councillor Sean Percy, then please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair, and thanks, uh, Simon, for uh, bringing the report uh, to, to the committee uh, today. I'm uh, really uh, pleased to see the update, and uh, actually quite, uh, it makes quite good reading. I think we've taken on board a lot of the suggestions and a lot of the sort of uh, perhaps sensible, helpful points that were in there, um, despite so, some of the challenges we've been facing. In particular, I think um, some of the comments on communications uh, are quite reassuring to me. Um, I think that that is one of those issues where, you know, we've not quite got that right in the past. And, and I certainly think, you know, if, if we sort of follow through with with what's written in here, um, we, we'll be in good stead for some of the future projects. Um, I, I, in, in particular, I think, you know, we can be a bit slow off the mark sometimes. Um, and the way I always look at it, if it's a spade in the ground, we should be telling people what we're doing. Um, and sometimes there's a lag of months, isn't there? Um, and uh, I, I think if if we can embrace that and you know resources allow in um, sort of up our game in 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 that field, I think that that'll do us all um, a lot of good, and I think the public will get um, a much more confidence in what we're doing as well. Um, and just one other point I wanted to pick up was um, the point around community benefits. So I think that's that's a really important one as well. Um, that that perhaps we've acknowledged that, that maybe there's a better way of. Um, of us doing that a bit earlier and, and getting the officers involved a little bit sooner in those projects. Um, uh, particularly, again, for the public to see the direct benefit from the project and the, the benefit. So I think that's 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 really reassuring. So uh, no no questions, Chair, no questions, Simon. Just um, thank you for the update and, and thanks for the progress so far. Thank um, you for that, Sean. Simon, did you want to make a comment back to, to Sean yeah. anyway? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Thanks for the comments. Um, as you say, um, it's it's largely positive, thankfully. Um, as ever with these things, there's always things you can do better. Um, you know, when we would acknowledge that. Um, you know, and so that's potentially sometimes to do with systems, sometimes to do with resources, or sometimes a combination of both. Um, what we have um, reinvigorated is the um, the sort of milestone planner that we do with media, uh, so that they have a much better idea of what's coming ahead. Uh, in terms of um, you know everything from the planning application through, um, hopefully that will will solve most of those problems. Occasionally you get caught out when other people make announcements and different things, and you're not ready for it. But that is sometimes the way of the world, unfortunately. But um, yeah, by and large, I mean I think the community benefits. Um, I mean the, the work that we've done in the schools, and I, I, I perhaps I will bring one of the reports through. I think that we've had on the community benefits because I think it would be interesting. For the members to see and how positive it is and um, you know getting people back into work um, and some pretty difficult cases sometimes who've got employment and have, have changed their lives around so um, we've done some work with Morgan Sindel recently on that I think for um, the uh, one of the comps so I, I shall I shall bring something forward on that because I think that will be interesting for you to see. Yeah thank you for that Simon and uh, I'm sure all members would appreciate that and it, it, it Sean, Sean made some good points there, and thank you for your response. And the next uh, councillor in pre-briefing was Councillor Hugh James. Wants to ask a question, Hugh? Oh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Simon, I follow on uh, my colleague, uh, Councillor Sean, there. It's a good report, and there's a lot of progress moving forward. And I think the communications is, is a vital part of it. Very brief question, Simon. I don't know if anything's changed since the last report. Um, particularly from, you know, Welsh Government. I think I raised it in the last meeting uh, about a wonderful uh, formula from Welsh Government about, to, you know, flood areas. You know, obviously that's always a tough one to deal with because sometimes people get the impression out there that 
we can't touch this bit of land, touch that land, or do a development because we've got the flood issues. I just wonder if there's any more update on that, Simon. Otherwise, excellent report. Uh, no, we're in the same position, uh, to be honest, Councillor James. Um, we've got, I mean, obviously NRW look after that part of the world for Welsh Government. Um, we still have a lot of issues around the county borough with flood zones. They do change, and that is something that I think baffles a lot of the public sometimes, where um, you know we tell them for years that we can't develop on something, and then the flood map changes, and all of a sudden we can, or conversely with developers who buy a parcel of land because it's outside of the flood zone, and then as they're putting their project together, find that it's in. So it is a it is a tricky area. Um, you know, I think that the information that they've got is getting better year on year and hopefully more robust then. So we're making the best decisions that we can. I mean, for us, in terms of taking developments forward where we've got challenging areas with, um, with flood mitigation, it's, um, you know, for us, it's an expensive process and it's a risk because we may not get to the, the result we want at the end of it. So we just have to recognise that as we go through it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Yes, yeah, fine. Before I bring the update. There we are, thank you. Yeah. Before I bring Nigel in, just on that point that Hugh mentioned, Simon, mm. <laughs> NW do baffle uh, uh, not just councils, but uh, all of us uh, with uh, the ma remapping and, and so forth, when really nothing ever changes. Um, is there a process of challenging, you know, uh, through the authority? Because uh, as you probably and all of us would know, land is extremely valuable uh, and to get the planning for whatever, uh, it, you know, given where we've been with austerity and everything else would be something important, not just to Nick Patel, but, Council, but to anybody who possibly has land. Um, I just wondered, uh, and I know they can do it individually, I, I am aware of that, but I just wonder through the authority for our own purposes, is it a mechanism of challenge in NRW? Because I'm sure we could find a case well, like you said, they're in and out. It's, it's like Zebedee, uh, you know, and uh, I just wondered uh, if you had any knowledge on, on that. Th thank you. It's on a case by case basis still, because um, what you will have to do is to prove that the um, effectively the development that you want to do is not going to not going to put anybody else into detriment. Um, and that's the difficult bit. Um, so you know, it, it is a long process and involves a lot of consultancy work because it's not skills that we have in house. Obviously, to do that type of work is very specialist work, um, but there's no blanket challenge as such. Um, I mean, the only thing I would say for NRW, NRW's defence is the world is changing all the time and flooding issues are becoming more prevalent, as we've seen over the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, they're doing the best with the resources they've got as well, I guess, um, and trying to understand where the impacts will be. Um, and and obviously, when we do a development and you look at the um, the flow rates and all the rest of those things in the rivers, they will then take the data that we provide through the consultants and maybe change their model slightly. So their model will always be a constantly changing um, uh, status, unfortunately, which then you know is is more concerning them with uh, with for developers because uh, you know it just adds more into the risk risk element of it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Comes to Nigel and then please. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to ask Simon really about the Leveling Up Fund and um, have we heard anything um, about the Leveling Up Fund? Have we had any indication of where, if we haven't received um, uh, an, an answer to whether we've, I know we applied for £10 million pounds with the grants. Um, have we had uh, any answer on that or do we know when we do we expect an answer? On the 10 million uh, and also sure? shared prosperity fund simon yeah do you know anything uh, about that have we any have we any indication what that is going to be looking for what what, mm -hmm. uh, what their priorities are going to be and thirdly with the shared prosperity fund will you be uh, collaborating with local members for the town center areas if 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 it is similar to the leveling up fund um okay the on the leveling up fund the short answer is no, we haven't heard anything, um, which uh, we haven't heard anything on the levelling up fund or the community's renewable fund. Um, the levelling up fund obviously has a bit of a longer play in, but we do have um, 
we you know if we were to be successful then we do have a spend profile for this year and we were hoping to know early part of the summer i guess and we still don't know anything now and we're not having any indication that we're going to get a decision imminently um, for us that causes a major problem obviously because getting spend out by the end of the financial year will be extremely difficult mm. um, similarly with the uh, with the crf uh, you know there's a lot of uh, the organizations out there who've been part of the bidding process who are now saying well we're gonna have to change our spend profile completely and maybe change tack in some of the stuff we're doing because again they were hoping to be in a worst case scenario have commenced it by the 1st of September. Well, we're now you know, what um, coming towards the sort of mid to uh, end of September. We haven't heard anything. And so when you've only got until March to get the money out. It's um, it's a difficult process. Um, I think the the time scales that we had on the leveling up fund were just um, just very, very challenging and um, I spoke to a consultant last week who did some work for one of the English authorities and they had a team uh, from that consultancy who were working, I think they said they were working 12 hour days the first week, 15 hour days the second week and 18 hour days the third week to get the, that that work in. And the authority told them just to throw any money, they had, just throw the money at it. Um, obviously we're not in that position financially to do those sorts of things. Um, but the timescales they give us were, were were really tough, and um, I think you know we we've we've got to make some decisions now because we've got to do some um, well we, we really have to do some more work on the projects, but because we haven't got any indication of whether we're successful or not, it will, the challenge will be having to do that at risk, and then potentially not being able to reclaim some of the costings, so you know otherwise you can't deliver these things. So that's a decision that we're wrestling with internally at the moment. In terms of the shared prosperity fund, hey, we'll do that. Oh, sorry. No, it's all right. Uh, sorry, carry on. OK, um, in terms of the shared prosperity fund, um, you know, obviously that will follow from the levelling up fund and they're hoping to some learn something from the process, I think, as to how that actually plays out. Um, I think, you know, we only hope that we're given better timescales next time to try and get something together and you know and, and really for it to be beneficial you need to have a better run at it um but as with everything you know we'll we'll do what we can to get bids in um consultation wise obviously we had limited opportunity um last time with the leveling up fund so hopefully if we can get some projects some ideas and that's what we're working on at the moment is getting some very long list ideas that we can put together that we can talk to members about so that at least they'll have seen some of the projects that we're hoping to submit prior to the event. Oh, th uh, thank you, Simon. Thank it, you. It, it, seem, it seems quite. They, they were they were quite harsh on the deadline, which obviously made it difficult for your team to get there. And yet now it yeah. comes to the answer. They seem to be taking leisurely time, so it's, it's like as if it's, they set this up to fail somewhat you know and obviously we've got some hurdles to climb over but is there any way we can get any indication of of, of what's going to be in the shared prosperity yeah. fund because at least if we know what 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 uh, you know what the priority is going to be we can do a little bit of planning and and to, you know to take advantage of the opportunity but i'm not yeah. disappointed with your answer so it's a thorough yeah. answer it's just the content of what you're telling me is disappointing me because it just seems that they've set us up to fail somewhat, but um, I, 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 I would like I, I, I think we should involve members on this, the town centre mm -hmm. members, because, you know, we have to deal with the, the issues in the town centres. So obviously we're always thinking, you know, we're thinking about our, our, our transport facilities, we're thinking about our theatres, we're thinking about our key retail sites, which were all priorities in the levelling up fund. So I, I, I would request that. It, when it comes to the, the the next phase of it, that we we do get some sort of involvement, I think it would be beneficial. Is it? Is there any way we can we? Is there any way we can contact the government? Would we have to do that through our MPs um, um, to, to ask them? You know, yeah. what's going on? Or any indication? Because it seems you know dreadfully unfair, actually. Yeah. Can we try not to stray from the agenda, right, um, Nigel? No, it, it is. It's on the level of fun, Steve. 
Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I know. She's on, she's she's the regeneration. Uh, can you stop a minute while I'm talking? Uh, I know it's there because it's regeneration actions, you know, following an examination by the audience. So I appreciate it. Your questions are perfectly correct. I just, I just say and try. We let's try not to stray into other parts that are not within this uh, remit at all. I, I'm not criticizing your questions. I'm just asking. Be mindful of that. Uh, Simon, did you want to come back on those last yeah. few points? Yeah, yeah, just to wrap that up, uh, Chair. Um, the, I mean, our, our information that has come back, I mean, albeit informally, really, is that um, they've been inundated with bids. Um, I know, I'm not quite sure why they're surprised at that, um, because you know they ask for bids and we put them in. So that seems a very logical process, but they seem to be surprised by the level of bids that they've had, and they're struggling to deal with going through them. Um, and the indication is that there's not going to be a huge amount of money available. Um, because obviously, if you look at the amount of, you divide the amount of bids that have gone in by the amount of money they had available, which suggests that a lot of us are going to be unsuccessful. So I think we just have to wait and see. But as I said earlier, it's the timing is critical for us because we need to know sooner rather than later. So we're just, we are, we are, you know, keeping our ear to the ground, um, but we'll all hear effectively the same time, I think. Thank you, Simon. Nigel, can I ask you to probably correspond with Simon and his team? on a regular basis, and I'm sure any, any uh, help you can offer, uh, it would be appreciated in the context of what you're able to do. Uh, and I'm sure Simon can give you that advice and information, uh, uh, you know, on a daily basis if necessary, I'm sure. But uh, if you correspond with him, and uh, you probably can do whatever you need to do for, in your role as, as the local member. So. Uh, if that's all right. Have you got anything further on that, Nigel? Well, Steve, I, I will correspond with uh, the, the regeneration team because it, it would be of benefit. But uh, I just want to make members aware, really, that since Brexit, Level Up Fund is replacing the European money. And if you look at the percentage that Wales is getting of the Level Up Fund and the percentage that we have for the European money, we're having a massive net loss. So I'd like members to be aware of this. There's a consequence of Brexit, the Tory the, 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 White, the Westminster government are using this against us. And now we're hearing this story from Simon, of course, which which is which is really disappointing that, um, you know, the odds are against us. They set us up to fail. So I think that we need to discuss this in, in maybe in other forums, but we, we certainly need to be aware of it, that we, we're losing out yeah. heavily. Yeah, th yeah, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, of course, we make people aware of it and, and you're right to pursue it. But thank, but thank you for that. Um, has any other member got any questions now for Simon? I don't see hands or anybody indicated. Um, the report, as you will be aware, is for information purposes. Therefore, we will uh, note the report this morning. I move sure. on. To, oh, sorry. Who's hand up? Sure. I, I have my hand up, Steve. Sorry. Who's that? Chair. Sure. Annette. Sorry, I it's didn't see it. Yeah. With the iPad, I'm using my old iPad. Apologies know, for that. And I, I can't see anything. Chloe, That's if you'll keep an eye out as well for me and, and let me know. Over to you then, Annette. That's all right. It's fine, Steve. It happens. Um, I just wanted to say with Nigel, I think everybody's aware of what they're actually doing to us with these, this funding. And, you know, you are right. But the people to get hold of are our MPs because they're the ones that can take the message back properly. Um, as for a forum, I don't know why you would take that in this council, um, because technically you're, you're air on political issues. But um, yeah, we are all aware it is absolutely terrible, and I will agree with you on that. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Um, yeah, so if you keep your eyes out then, because I'm using this old iPad, I, I can't see hands. Apologies yeah, for that. Thank you. Sorry, Annette. Um, OK. Item six is the pre-decision scrutiny. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have chosen to scrutinise item seven and eight from the Cabinet Board agenda papers. So uh, if you go over to the Cabinet papers, uh, agenda item seven is the lease of 56 London Road neath to the Office of the Police and Crime Commissioner. Uh, this report is for a decision. I believe the reporting officers are Chris Millis and Claire Jones. Um, this will be um, a proposal, a recommendation on this particular item. The report is on pages 
13 to 50. I'm sure members will have uh, have uh, read the report. Uh, I don't know if Claire or Chris uh, want to uh, make any comments prior to questions. Uh, so either of you, uh, Chris, Claire, no? No, thank you, questions. questions. There you go. The, uh, same with you, Claire. Yeah. Here we are. Any member, as I said, the report is in your papers. Any member want to ask questions on this? Who's got their hand up, Chloe? I did see a it's hand. Oh, Councillor Sean Percy. Yeah. Over to Councillor Sean Percy, please. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chair. Um, no, I, I wanted to pick up on on something in the report um, uh, regarding uh, references to antisocial behaviour in East Town Centre. And th th there's a reference made that it's not known whether the perpetrators of ASB um, use the services at this building um, uh, uh, referred to in the item. So I, I'm just wondering if, if um, you know, we are going to be doing any monitoring um on on that in particular because i i think we can all agree there's a need for these services in east town center and that's absolutely um you know i don't think any of us will will deny that given all the the work we've been uh, doing and and following over the years on substance misuse um but I, i'm a little surprised that the reports come to us with that sort of uncertainty you know these issues have been brewing in east town center for quite a while i would have expected us to kind of have a bit more of a, a an idea of whether there's a crossover between the, the group causing the issues in Neath and people accessing this facility because obviously if we can pinpoint it to to a particular location um etc there may be you know interventions we can put in place to tackle that so um i'm just curious on that one if we are in, intending to to do some specific monitoring and then follow-up actions on that point thanks chair Thank you, Sean. Uh, Claire, please. Thank you, Chair. I think the point I was trying to, to make is that the antisocial behaviour in Neath Town Centre can't be laid at the door in, entirely of the people who are using London Road. And perhaps that would have been a better way of expressing that. I'd, I'd like to assure you, uh, Councillor Percy, that there's an awful lot of work happening on the ground to ensure we know who is perpetrating the antisocial behaviour and ensuring that where possible we try and get them access into services. So there's the Street Vulnerability Marek, um, there's a regular meetings between colleagues uh, at the at the I'm going to say at the ground level, but at an operational level, South Wales Police have referred to a sort of a core group of, of individuals who are causing the problem. I've suggested that we um, have like a deep dive into those cases to see are they getting the help they need? Um, you know, um, do they need more encourage, encouragement or, or whatever? So I, I think actually I've probably done the services on the ground a little bit of disservice by, by using that sentence. I just didn't want to conflate the problems in Neath with that building, but highlight also now that there is an awful lot of work going on in terms of enforcement, but also in terms of support. So yes, the answer is yes, there's lots of work going on. Um, and will continue to, to do so. And I know we are going to do some further, well, to, to, to admit a deep dive work. Um, I know uh, our harm reduction lead is getting involved in that as well. Thank you for that, Claire. Sean, do you want to come back? Yeah, no, only, only brief, you know, th th thanks for that. Of course, yeah, you know, I've been sort of aware of the wider work going on, um, but I think this is kind of, you know, highlighted, isn't it, this particular, um, facility in this particular service in East Town Centre um, and it, it would certainly be interesting for, for me as a committee member to sort of um, understand some of this work as it as it continues in terms of unpicking some of these issues um, particularly where we may have a few individuals that are causing problems you know this might not be the right setting for them to access that support it, it could be one example you know I think we, we do need to be open to the possibility that um, we may be causing part of an issue um, in in some cases. So I, I I just thought that you know it's it's really interesting that we've acknowledged 
um, we've acknowledged that, but I, I'd be really uh, keen to sort of see some follow up as to, yeah, how we're going to unpick, as you say, it's a, it's a small number of people that have got a big, a big impact, isn't it? All right, Sean. Yeah, Claire, you got your hand up. Did you want to come back? Or legacy hand, is it? Yeah. Before I bring Nigel in, oh, well, Sheila first and then Nigel. Can I just remind members this item is for use of the building to continue in, in the, the report is self explanatory on this as well. Uh, so let's not uh, digress into the drug and alcohol across the county borough. It's about the building, it's about its continued use. In the way in the work that it's doing uh so it's not a debate on anti-social behavior or drug abuse generally just to remind members when they bring their questions uh councillor sheila penry then please <coughs> yes chair you've just answered what i was going to say you know we are here today to look what the building is there for and that is to help people you know nothing to do with anti-social and I've got to say, in the past years, this has been doing a tremendous stuff. I've been doing tremendous work. We have helped. Your, well, I, 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 I think Chris could give us a figure what we've helped. And, you know, they've... Uh, so it's nothing to do with antisocial behaviour. This is there for people that are desperately in need of help. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Sheila. Before I bring in Hugh and then, uh, Nigel, sorry, then Hugh. Uh, it, 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 it does as a part to play with antisocial behaviour that's been highlighted by those living in Neath and uh, people visiting Neath. So, uh, but what I was trying to uh, refer to is that the report is about the use of this building. That's what this item agenda is. Uh, and it's not a widespread antisocial behaviour and drug and alcohol abuse, but but there is there is a part of antisocial behaviour perceived, whether it's correct or not. That that's something else. But the work uh, that that is needed is is ongoing, as as Claire has mentioned. Um, I'll, I'll ask a question at the end when members have finished. Uh, uh, Nigel, come to Nigel, and then please. Oh, thanks, thanks, Steve. I think probably what I'm going to say is invalid then, because I was going to ask, is there a correlation between this centre and the um, antisocial behaviour in Neath, which this actual committee has been having meetings about uh, because it's so severe. And uh, I was wondering whether bringing people in with chaotic lifestyles and uh, heroin addiction into this area is having an adverse effect. Right? P possibly that's invalid. Um, I, why yeah. are we giving them a peppercorn rent? What, what's the benefit of giving this facility a, a peppercorn rent, which I'd like to ask. Before I bring Claire or, or, or Chris back in, no, that, that first part of your question is valid. Of course, it, there's a correlation uh, of possible using a facility where people have got issues uh, that could uh, spread into the, into the, the town centre. So, no, that's a valid question, and I'll ask Claire to answer it, or, or Chris to come back in. Uh, on this, but the peppercorn rent, I don't know if that's the remit uh, or Simon's really, but uh, I go to Claire first and maybe she can enlighten us. Claire. Um, thank you, Chair. I think what I, I was trying to say earlier is that, it's, that we, we can't blame everybody who attends the London Road facility for the antisocial behaviour. And I think that was, the, you know, the point I was making, but also recognising that there is that there is an issue of antisocial behaviour in Neath Patal. But I didn't want to bring this report without recognising that fact either. I think it's fair to say that if we didn't have these support services, the situation would be very much worse because the the whole... Uh, reason for being of these services is to get people the help they need to get their lives turned around and stabilised uh, to prevent them offending or re-offending or for other instances to stop them being exploited um, criminally or sexually. Um, so the situation in respect of antisocial behaviour would be, in my opinion, very much worse if we didn't have, um, have these uh, services. Uh, a very important question is raised, though, in, in terms of is it the right building? Is it in the right place? Well, at this moment in time, it is 
I hate the phrase, so excuse me, I hate it myself, is it is what it is, but to assure um, scrutiny that the area planning board is embarking on a major transformation project, which it will be looking at the delivery of substance misuse services across the region and how they can be improved. And part of that um, piece of work will inevitably look at are the services in the right place? Are they configured in the right way? Um, could they be done differently and, and better? But ultimately as well, the location of these services has to be in areas where people can get to easily. Because if we want people to access these services and turn their lives around, we've got to make sure that they can get there. Um, you know, so you know, public transport and, and, and the like. So I hope I've answered your, your question, Councillor Hunt, about the um, correlation. Um, but also, I suppose, acknowledging that as we go along our transformation project, you know, that's going to be looked at, but that's in the future. That's somewhere, some probably, um, you know, a number of years down the line yet. Uh, in terms of the peppercorn rent, it's not an area um, of, of expertise for me. My assumption is that because the building was bought and refurbished with um, Welsh Government Substance Misuse Action Fund capital, so Substance Misuse effectively bought the building and paid for the works, the payback is that the rent is at a peppercorn rent. That would be my understanding, Chair, but I'm I'm not an expert um, and I'm not sure if, if any colleagues uh, from Environment would like to add further to that. Um, thank you for that, Claire. Before I bring Nigel back, anybody wants to elaborate on the peppercorn rent, Simon? Do, would you know anything about property uh, with buildings? Any, anything to add? Just checking if I'm still on mute because it's showing me I'm on mute. But I... No, you're all right. I'm all right, mate. OK, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't looked at the detail on this case. Um, I think that's probably about right. I think they were from my very long memory. I think they provided money to refurb the premises. And so that's why it's probably um, a peppercorn rent. I can I can check if you like, Chair, but uh, or if, um, if you'd like, uh, you know, to, to contact me directly, we will find the answer out for that one. There we are. That's excellent. I'll ask Nigel to do that. Nigel, did you want to come back on any of the responses? You OK? OK, then I'll move on to uh, Councillor Hugh Jameson, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to support the use of this building continuing to start off with. And let's be realistic. We're all sensible people here today. We've got members, we've got senior officers of the council. The drug issue, the vulnerable people, as both uh, Claire and you, Chris, know, is not going to go away. They are vulnerable people, they need help, and sadly, it's probably on the increase. Nothing to do with COVID, it was there before. And I think this building will do that sort of service. And I'm sure as we move forward, both Claire and uh, Chris, you know, working closely with the police and other services, uh, we will find uh, that this will be well used. So I'm going to support that this morning. I also think location, as you rightly said, is important. Uh, because it was tucked away somewhere else, you, not accessible with people like this. They don't own cars, most of them. They're vulnerable. They've got to get there by bus or whatever. And I think that that site is is, is good. So I'm going to lend my support to that this morning. All thank you, Chair. Thank you, Hugh. Um, I don't think there's a uh, there's a question in there. So, Sean, Councillor Sean Percy, then please. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, Chair. No, I, I only wanted to sort of come back briefly, really, um, more than anything, perhaps clarify again some of the points I was making earlier. But um, I, I think fundamentally what we're you know, looking at in Neath is, you know, a lot of the antisocial behaviour issues are symptoms of people not receiving adequate support. And I think that's kind of where I'm getting at is you know, when Claire is going to be looking into some of these cases, perhaps, you know, at a really in-depth level, I think that's probably where we're going to end up, isn't it? We're going to find people that are struggling to access adequate support to not have that chaotic lifestyle, which is spilling out into the streets and causing public concern. Um, and I just think that's that's the important key here, isn't it? Because this building's obviously doing fantastic work and supporting a lot of people. And I completely agree with Claire, if it wasn't there, 
we'd be seeing a lot more problems. But what we've got to figure out is how we can reach these more difficult cases and 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 help those people. And I think if we can crack that or improve that even in a, a, a small way, we're gonna we're gonna see you know a, an improvement in in the issues in East Town Centre because policing isn't the answer to the problem, is it? You know that is moving people away, not actually dealing with 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 the issues. So. I, I think it was very worthwhile, I guess, having that discussion today in relation to this, because I think that is the, the issues are linked. But I completely agree with Claire. We can't just put it all at the, the foot of this at this door. Chair, can I come in? in I yeah, go on, Chris. Thank you. And your comments are, are valid. We have a difficult decision or sort of support mechanism to make. We can help anyone to receive the support that they want. The difficulty is reaching those people that don't want the support. And that's our task. And that's what makes it a difficult area. And you're sp spot on, Chris. Uh, Claire, before I bring you back in, uh, Hugh and Nigel, are those legacy hands? Because it doesn't take a lot to confuse me. <laughs> if you can put them down. Uh, Claire, you, you wanted to come back on Sean's and uh, I think Chris has sort of mentioned it as well. Yeah, I think um, what Chris has said is is absolutely right. I mean, there are go into people who who won't ever engage, but there are people for whom we need to make it easier for them to engage. So we've done things like um, assertive outreach. Um, we've got the rapid access prescription service because the waiting lists were putting people off. They thought they were never going to get treatment, so why bother? Well, now they can get more. Uh, more rapid access that's um you know enabling people to get help so it's absolutely right about um trying to make it as easy as possible for people to get the help they need and to encourage those who aren't getting the help to have it but at the end of the day some people cho may choose not to thank you claire any other member i don't see any hands up anybody else no just a couple of, from me then um uh, Councillor Percy sort of touched on the questions I was going to raise and uh, obviously I mean on page 16 the, the report says about the concerns of antisocial behaviour in the town centre exacerbated by uh, substance misuse and using the London Road facility. Now I'm all in favour of re rehabilitation and, and uh, the work that this does. Uh, I've worked close, closely with you, Claire, and, and Leanne, Cabinet Member, Deputy Leader Chris, and all the partners. So I know the excellent work you're all putting in and how difficult it is. You mentioned and touched on uh, those that do not want the help. Um, but sometimes uh, the, the resources, which you know, is probably tattooed on my forehead now uh, with police. Uh, I just want to know sometimes because I'm well aware, and this isn't a perception, this is a factual, they, they do methadone uh, use. Obviously, it is part of a programme. They do go into the Victoria Gardens uh, to, to either uh, use it or take it. And the point I'm making is that with the resources, and I know a lot of resources have been thrown at Neath, this is the case because London Road, that facility is so close to the Victoria Gardens, uh, and then they've got benches and so forth. They are going in there. And I, I do accept and, uh, and appreciate that there's it's not all the, the patients uh, that are uh, pointed to that facility. There are others, and that's the problem. The, the, everybody within that sort of remit, meet uh, uh, and, and, and get together, uh, which uh, sort of creates an anti-social behaviour platform. Uh, it, it's just a, a sort of what I'm getting at, the facility and what the item is here today, 100% be support. Everybody needs support to get them back to where they need to be. And we need to outreach for those who are difficult to get. I think we should find a way of reaching them uh, you know, going above and beyond, and I know we do our best to do that. It's just that I, I want to make reference to uh, monitoring and, and making sure that while we are doing what we should be doing, it doesn't have a, a, an impact on the wider communities within the locality. It's a difficult one, I, I appreciate that, but I'm sure Leanne, uh, in her role, and as Deputy Leader, and I know excellent work that you're all doing, maybe more pressures, and we still need to get more resources 
for, for ourselves and, and for the police, really, so that we can uh, alleviate uh, uh, a lot of the concerns and perhaps the perception, which is quite right in, in, in many, many cases. I mean, on page 19, it, it goes on to say uh, treatment support is key in reducing offending. The report is an excellent report, fully supportive of it. Uh, but the police to provide an early intervention uh, when someone is arrested with prob problematic substance use, uh, you know, it's a factor, of course it is. And if, if we can get to the root of the cause, uh, early intervention, which is in, in most cases the best solution uh, moving forward, rather than treating the already uh, uh, huge drug and, uh, and alcohol. I don't think we touched on that because... I don't think that the, the, the abuse of alcohol is part of this building, uh, unless you, you got, you're going to tell me you can, alcoholics can use it or, or whatever. But uh, those are just a few points from me, because it's important that we do recognise them. And, and I'm not suggesting we don't, but what I'm saying is moving forward, we need to remember that we have a duty of 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 what we are trying to achieve we don't want to be we want to get neath town center and put albert town center uh the best we can it's never going to be perfect and we're working towards that and i just want to finally then say i thank you chris and all the team and the police and everybody else involved in what you are doing because you are on the right path uh, and it's a real difficult job to be honest with you, because you don't know what, what's going to be coming, <laughs> you know, in, in, in the very near future. Uh, keep an eye on the ball, so forth and everything. So I think uh, it was a lot of statements, Claire, but I don't know if you or Chris want to pick up on, on a couple of the points that I may have raised. Uh, up to you. Yeah. I will before. I'm not yeah. Jones has a, just a couple of points from me. Wherever this is located, yeah. there will be a Victoria Gardens nearby. Whether they use a low wall, a garden, a car park, a children's play park, there will always be a group of young pe of people that will choose to behave a certain way. So wherever we position this centre will cause a Victoria Gardens. And just to clarify, substance misuse does cover alcohol. Alcohol and drug addiction often go hand in hand and people make different decisions under the influence of alcohol. And please don't mix up alcohol and drug, the traditional drug, aren't that much difference in price anymore. So what we need to target are those people that are abusing these vulnerable people as well as these victims themselves. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and before I bring Leanne in, I accept that. I, and I wasn't referring to the addiction. I was referring to, does the building have the capacity to treat alcoholism that's that's what i was referring to because it's more related to drug abuse isn't it and that's, that's all it was I, I know the correlation between them as you say is correct um claire do you want to come back before i bring leanne in i see you on that positive legacy and again no all i was going to say chair is that the approach continues to be the you know south wales police are undertaken oh sorry that's my dog <laughs> are undertaking enforcement but also looking at how they can um encourage people to receive the support uh, that that they want as as well i'm sorry some, my dog's going mad because there's someone just at my door so we can't hear you there. it's okay it, it's okay no that's fine yeah before i bring you in yeah i accept that as well it's just a resources is a, is a major part of of what we try to achieve and uh, just for you Leanne as well I know I said it a few times but uh, resources with police to deal with a lot of the problems is, is key isn't it so over to you Leanne. Thanks Chair uh, it's just to reiterate really what Chris and Claire have said and obviously I do take members points on board Um, we all know that there's issues in the Amber Talbot but there are the correct agencies around the table addressing these issues and, you know, we've got to remember that these people need help as well. And they have got the addictions and they and they are people at the end of the day. So I fully take on board everybody's comments here. But I can guarantee you that all partners are around the table combating and working on these issues. But you rightly said, Steve, resourcing is a key problem. And, I, you know, I am speaking to the PCC on a regular basis. So I just wanted to say that. 
Thank you, Leanne. Yeah, points well made, and, and and I think most most members will accept and understand that. But keep up the good work, uh, everybody. So thank you for that. Uh, I don't see no further hands or indications. So this is a, uh, as I said, this is a, a report for as a recommendation. So I'll take you now to page twenty, um, uh, where the proposed decision is. Uh, can I have somebody to move? That this goes to cabinet, please. I move. As written. Thank you, Sheila. Second, please. I'll second. Second, chair. There we are. Got that, Chloe? Yep. Thank you, chair. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item eight then, and this is the rural development plan, uh, two thousand fourteen, two thousand twenty. And I know I asked the question pre-briefing that it. The 2020 has elapsed, but it, it, it's an extension. It is uh, there in the report. Uh, it, this report, again, is for information. And I believe uh, um, Chris Millis, Angeline Spooner Cleverly, and Nicola Bray are the officers uh, today. Uh, it's again for information, but uh, the report is on pages 51 to 68. Do either of those officers want to make any brief statements? Prior to any questions? No, thank you, Chair. Oh. Any, any questions? Any easy ones? I'll take them. Any hard ones? Angeline's on the call. <laughs> That's fair enough, Chris. Right, I go straight to questions then. I, um, uh, Sean Percy then first then, please. Did, I think, did you indicate a pre-briefing, Sean? I'm not sure. Well, I, I think I did. Um, I've got some in. Some yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. so uh, yeah, it's been good to see this report actually, because I, I I wasn't uh, I wasn't very up to speed on some of the progress of this particular fund. It's not it doesn't cover my ward. I'm over in Samfields, um, so I I've, uh, I'm missing out on this funding as I often seem to do in in Samfields East. Um, but I, I can't really complain. We're not a rural area. Um, but no, it's been interesting actually looking at some of the more recent projects. Actually, I think uh, it, certainly to my eyes. Some of the the later projects in this fund seem to be hitting those um, objectives much better than I felt some of the earlier ones did, um, and I just wondered, has there been a change in the way we've engaged, or uh, what seems to have driven? Perhaps that it, it, it seems to me to be a bit of a shift in some of those later projects um, that we've we've taken on recently. I'm, I'm one that stands out to me is with with my sort of uh, I'm a local history. Uh, Enthusiast, um, it's nice to see, um, you know, the the chapel in Margan Park um, receiving some funding, um, which I think will be a great project for local heritage as well. So I'm just curious if there has been a sort of shift in focus at any stage of the project. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I see Angeline got a hand up, so I'll come to you first, Angeline. Um, yeah, so I think we've been around quite a long time now, councillor, with regard to RDP. Um, and as you can imagine, in the beginning, it was sort of a bit of a, I wouldn't say free for all, but of course it was more money available. So then people would come to us then with their ideas and we would fund obviously some of it with a robust sort of system in place. Um, and then I think the report notes then that uh, we had a, a midterm evaluation then with uh, Sarah Wheel and, and uh, et al. So we kind of tried to look at then um, our poverty elements in line with the, the LDS to make sure we're hitting some of our corporate kind of ideas as well. So you'd see then that maybe things are a bit more focused. Um, and also, I think as it's evolved, because as, as was mentioned earlier, that we've had an extension. So although it says 2020, we're kind of going up to 2022 to sort of alleviate the confusion, I guess. Um, we want to utilise our underspend, really, hence the reason why it's, it's moved, up, moved across a bit more. And as you can imagine, COVID kind of played a part in things having to move across, you know, in terms of timescales. Um, so, yeah, I think the midterm evaluation that we had focused us a, focused us a little bit more um, to try and align the things with the corporate plan, with, you know, our poverty elements of the, the local authority and, and the borough. So that's why you see that um, things seem to be more focused. I'll ask Nicola to come in as well, because she might want to add. Nicola is our project manager. Um, Nicola is here today because I manage quite a large brief, as people would know, I kind of think. Um, so I bring in the project manager as well, just to give you a bit more detail. So Nicola may want to add some more detail as well. Nicola. Thanks, Angeline. Um, 
No, to be honest, you've reflected it really well. I think it was a, a, an opportunity for us to take on board a lot of issues that had previously arisen, um, partly because of eligibility, partly because of misunderstanding of what people were able to do. And really a lot of engagement work to try and get people to understand um, what they could do. Um, and really sort of trying to change the mindset um, of what people thought that um, that the programme was about um, and looking to engage people who hadn't previously engaged to, to see where we could fit in and what we could do to support them in, in what was needed in their areas. Thank you, Nicola. Sean? Yeah, no, thanks, Jen. No, thanks both for that. Um, I, I, I guess the the other question I've got is two two questions. Is there any money left? Mm. Um, and obviously, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, you, you said this project's been going for a while. I can remember way back just about when it launched. Um, you know, the, the future's uncertain, I suppose, in terms of, you know, future funding opportunities and everything else. But of course, you know, we've learned quite a lot and we've got a lot of networks and a lot of work has happened over the course of this project. So I, I guess it's just, you know, how are we going to make the most of that going forward as well? Because um, I'm, I'm sure there's, you know, opportunities that, that are going to come forward at, at some point in the future. And obviously, we've, whether it's staff or whether it's some of the, the networks and research we've done, I think it's going to be really important that we don't lose that if the funding uh, goes away. Can I come back, Chair? Sean, uh, and Angeline, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Um, the lag group that we've had, and some people will be aware of it, uh, has business people on the group. It has third sector on the group, you know, and it has members on the group as well. So it is a really good sort of network, really, in terms of the rural areas. So we would like to see what we can in terms of keeping that going, or at least have the contacts there. Um, I've been talking to Nicola and Kerry because they're part of the team um, with regard to where we go next. So the discussion you had earlier with regard to funding is pertinent to us. Um, we are talking uh, regionally with Welsh Government to see what the next thought process is with regard to the old European funding, which is becoming you know, what we talked about earlier. So I'm keen to try and look to see what, what's happening next. And you'll see in the report that we've talked about lobbying as well because it seems a bit unfair that LIDA, which is the RDP funding, isn't really being thought about enough at the moment. So we're talking to Welsh Government to see what their thoughts are next. And with regard to the new funding, are they going to look at utilising that? Obviously, I imagine they're looking at it at the moment, but I'm keen to try and see some form of transition with regard to our end here and something happening in between, but obviously that's funding dependent really. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was the first question. Sorry, Sean. What was the last question? Um, I think I was asking, was there, is there any money left in the pot at the moment? Yes, that's right. Sorry. Yes. So Nicola told me we we're on track to spend this money, but I'll bring her in just in case she's got more of an update than me. I have. Exactly. Since the report was written, I think we'd said that there had been 14 new projects in the last 12 months. That's now 16. So that again, that that pot is reducing. As it stands at the moment, there's 81,000 in the pot. However, there is one project that is with uh, the LAG group at the moment for a decision. And there is another one that is imminent to come into LAG. And those are both worth 64,000 in total. So if they were to be approved, then there'd be about 17,000 left in the pot. Um, but we can't guarantee they're going to be approved. So. It, it's sort of it's it's whether or not they're approved but then we are um still working with people who are coming forward with ideas so it'll be a first come first serve basis in that way thank you nicola sean all right yeah no that's great thanks both thank you councillor hill james then please i'll be brief uh, both of you angeline and your colleague uh, Keep the good work up. We go back a long way, don't we, Angeline? A uh, question I've got to ask you really is um, lobbying is very important because, you know, poverty and deprivation is not going to go away. It's going to be with us all the time. It's, it's high, as we know, in the Neath Port Albert area. Uh, and I think this money is well used in areas where there is high poverty and child deprivation. 
So I'm just wondering, really, would the lobby and continue to do it, Angelina and, and your good colleague? Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, is there a chance of this programme maybe extended even more from 2022? I don't know. Oh, just to come in, sorry. So um, they are looking at, I think, from the report from where I can remember, I've talked to Nicola as well, there is like, they're looking at 2024. So there is a bit of a lag with regard to lag being a lag rather than the lag. There is a bit of a gap between our funding now and the new funding coming into place. Uh, they did give local authorities sort of um, the, the authority to kind of move things over a little bit further, but only using the money we had. So our issue was, Obviously, we wanted to extend it so we had the programme in place for longer, but we didn't have any more money to do that. So we were able to reprofile the funds to be able to have the extra uh, year or so in place, so up to 2022, rather than it be December last year's in my head. I know it's in the report and Nicola can correct me. Quite happy to be corrected on it. Um, so we've had a little bit of extension, utilise the money we've got, but they haven't given us any new money. They did talk about having more money to extend, so there wasn't a gap. But as it stands, we think there'll be, um, if it's 2022, there will be a year or so gap before any more money coming in. So that's why it's important for us really to look to see what they're doing with the, the new money. Um, and I'm going to sort of vent some things to look at the Prosperity Fund, the Level and Up Fund, and all of the funding that we've got really to see where we can utilise that. And obviously tapping on to whatever Welsh Government are thinking about as well, because you know sometimes they have a piece of that. So it's all that kind of thing that we're doing, because you're right here, we, we work together for many, many years, and I just want to have some continuation of funding where possible, but there may be a gap there as well. Well, thank you both. Thank you, thank you uh, Through the chair, thank you, Nicola and Angeline. That's answered my question. So keep lobbying, go at it, and let's see if we can extend it. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, can you lower your hand as well, please? Thank you. Uh, any other member? Got a question? I don't see any hands. Uh, just briefly from me then, Angeline. Um, obviously, uh, again, uh, like you, uh, I've worked closely with you and your team. And uh, when we were allowed in the buildings, I mean, uh, we used to have a, a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, communication. Um, obviously, any funding that uh, supports the county borough as a whole, whether it's rural or, or any other type of funding, is, is welcome. And you do your team do a, a, a tremendous job, uh, take it back to everybody, those are not in this committee meeting today, uh, and to thank them, because I know, again, I, I, my re resources is my favourite word, uh, even in the authority, our resources are depleting year on year, uh, so to continue the work that you do is quite exceptional. I, I just wanted to touch on, I mean, you mentioned the, the leader funding, uh, I think members would be aware that uh, sometimes, the, the, the complex ways of trying to get funding, it sort of leaves community groups and, and others uh, in, a, in a position that there's no chance. They wouldn't even look at it. Once you start giving them the paperwork in the beginning, they'll say, oh, that's enough for me then. And uh, so, so we are not actually able to get to all those that may have excellent projects because of the complexities and it's not your complexities it's from uh, welsh government and europe because uh, i've seen them and you know and uh, you know to try and overcome and it is uh, is important but also match funding sometimes some of the the the, the actual uh, programs and so forth they expect you to have uh, 30 percent of your own funding to match with theirs and again uh, sorry to say that that sort of uh, forbid or not forbid stops any group, especially if they're a, a charity or a, a community action group, they, they wouldn't have the, the capacity to be able to fulfill. We all want uh, new programmes and stuff in, in our wards. I'm sure, again, we have this chat parochialism regularly. Uh, there's a lot in the programme. So I, I want to thank you for all of that work. And I just wondered some of the programs that you've got listed um you know they, they're exciting and a lot of work but it looks to me that a lot of them may need a, a maintenance program which is extra money it, mm -hmm. are these built into the grants that you may have or is because once it's delivered 
we wouldn't want, especially if it's monitor going forward, we wouldn't want that failing in a number of years. So, uh, because a lot of them in the rural are outdoors, they walk and they're, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to go on them all, but they're all in your reports. So I just wondered uh, where we are going with financial support and if it's going to change uh, and leave them, deliver it and over to you, get on with it. They may not have the capacity. So it's just a couple of points there, you know, because I have these conversations with you. So uh, sorry if it's all jumbled up, but that, that's how I am, isn't it? I, I jumble everything up. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> Thank fine. you, Angelia. No, it's fine, Chair. Um, you're right, match is always difficult. We all know that, you know, um, where possible with funds. You like to think it can be it can be support via people's time, because that's always useful if people can put in their time against things. Um, we do have match in RDP, so, um, but we've been able to kind of do what we can with volunteering time, et cetera, rather than sort of physical money then, I guess. Um, but it has been a difficulty, and I think we've recognised that and sort of fed back to WG. Um, with regard to support in the community, the RDP itself is a grassroots project, so it is a kind of first step. They're supposed to be innovative and creative, so it isn't sort of like about a project that's been going on for a couple of years that we pay some more money into it. Um, it is that kind of project. So it is good for support for community groups because we have development workers or facilitators, we call them, that work with the community group and they will help them to um, progress the project, you know. So it's been really good in that respect, I think, to support our community groups because as as you know, um, Steve, we've always worked in communities and, you know, we understand how, you know, with regard to people's capacity, etc. So, yes, um, that is that is the scenario. With regard to RDP um, and sustainability then in terms of maintenance, we do have as part of the application process, sad that I know some of this, I guess, but um, we do have a kind of exit strategy and sustainability element in the, the process of the application. So people do have to think about what they're going to do next, because like I said, it is a first start, really. So you're right, if it's something that we've created, um, the group does have to think about what happens next. Um, and as a team, we would look to help them to look for maybe more funding or be real about, you know, the maintenance aspect. Because you're right, as a, as a council, we can't just take things on like we used to many, many years ago in terms of maintenance. So, you know, we would try to pinpoint people towards um, other forms of funding moving forward. Um, but you're right, there is it is the starting point. It doesn't kind of develop on to we give more, more money for part two. Um, it's a starting point in terms of leader. Uh, I guess there are other funding out there, and I'm trying to think now of other funds that I used to be um, responsible for and things, that would have maintenance in them. It just depends on the terms and conditions of the grant. So they are very different. You, you're aware because you, me and you have, have locked up funding over the years and, and things like that. Um, they're all very different, but RDP is about, as it stands, about grassroots funding. So it's the starting point to empower people to move on to do the next kind of thing after that. Yeah, th thank you for that. The last point then that I forgot to mention, because there's so much I said, isn't it? Um, you you mentioned, the, Sean asked the question really, uh, how much money was left. So, so if a, a, a worthwhile project was still uh, in the in awards uh, looking to be put forward, is there a closing date now? Because uh, I think Nicola mentioned if that uh, recent ones that are in the panel are accepted, there will be no money left. So does that mean that, because uh, the message needs to go out once this is public, that you can't bid now? You, you, you know, it, it needs to be clear whether those who may want to come forward can or cannot. So just uh, is, it, is it now closed uh, or not? Yeah. I mean, Nicola will come in as well on this one, but I would say at the moment we're still accepting because we're not sure whether the, the lag would accept what's left. She mentioned 16 left. It's a small pot of money. Um, so I would still say, and Nicola will correct me if I'm wrong, um, happy for members to still contact me or Nicola uh, to talk about bids. But Nicola, tell me if I'm wrong. What no, I'm absolutely correct. I think that we we still, we will welcome any bids if, if people want to speak to the team um, regarding it. Um, because we can't guarantee, uh, as Angeline just said, that, that the projects that are in will be approved anyway. And obviously, we don't want to be spend, sending any money back. 
Um, so yeah, definitely worth the conversation. With regards to timelines, um, we finish in March 22. We need a few months um, for all the closure and the administration. Um, so at the moment, projects are being told that they need to finish around about December, possibly January. So that's the only um, consideration to factor in is that even if people are putting in bids, it's a very small, tight timeline to get those projects up and running. Thank you, Nicola. Um, last point then, sorry, I do talk a lot, but I got to say it. Uh, obviously, if it's March, uh, if, if local members were involved in, in any potential scheme, obviously, and it's accepted that they would go forward because uh, there's, there's an election next May and we may not be members. So would that uh, uh, cause any problems if it was run through a community group, but the local member were heavily involved? And maybe they wouldn't be the local member uh, by the time it started and went forward. Is, is, is that something that uh, would cause any problems? I suppose no. I suppose from my perspective, um, I would just say if a member's interested in in funding in terms of the topic areas that we've said, come and talk to us quickly um, because we've got to get the money sort of um, committed before Christmas anyway. So I think timeline wise for you, councillor, I think it would be OK in terms of our members. Um, and we need to kind of make sure the money is ready and committed before Christmas anyway. Otherwise, there's no way that people can spend it, even if we had until the end of March, because we may have. Um, staff still with us until sort of June, July time as an exit, you know, to, to finalise finances, etc. So I just say talk to us as quickly as possible um, and we can kind of uh, hopefully if there's any any projects there, we can kind of look at putting them through lag as soon as, soon as possible. Thank you, Anjane. Lovely. That's enough from me then. Uh, any other member got anything now further? No, I see none. Uh, Again, this report is on pages 51 to 68 and is to be noted. So I'll move on. Um, item 7 is the Scrutiny Forward Work Programme. Uh, it's attached for information, obviously, and for members to note. Uh, but I'll hand over to Chloe now because she takes this item for us uh, at this committee. Chloe, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to note that members have got their Regeneration and Sustainable Development Forward Work Programme workshop next week. Um, so that just gives members the opportunity to put anything onto that Forward Work Programme for the rest of the civic year. Um, so there'll be considered items for this committee and also um, if there's anything to add on to the Community Safety um, Subcommittee agenda Forward Work Programme as well, but I know that's already heavily populated. Um, but yeah, that's it from me really. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Chloe. Um, item 8 then are urgent items. I have no urgent items. It only leaves me to wish you all uh, uh, have a lovely weekend. <laughs>